So everybody knows how the coaster gets to the top of the lift. There's a chain that uh, engages, the train engages onto a chain, the chain pulls the train to the top of the hill and then gravity takes over it. It overspeeds the hookup point and travels away from the chain. But for the drop, we also have a chain. It's the same theory in reverse. So the engagement hook, called a chain dog, for going uphill, they have the same type, it's reversed, and it engages into the drop chain and it allows the coaster to go over the drop. So the whole wheel assembly will turn. Yeah, you can spin it right around. You can spin it here because there is no track. The, the, the train is on a, on a, on a, on a, on a storage uh, track, so there is no track that guides the wheels. This is where the track would go, right? Through, between the wheels. Uh, so, the train has to maintain a certain distance from the track. So these pads here, these skids, would keep it so that this brake fin still goes inside the brake properly. So what, what we're looking at is uh, the two blue pieces are the electric motor and the lift gear reducer transmission. And then there's a little diesel engine here that will, when we need to, we can use it instead of the electric motor. For whatever reason, if the train is already on the lift, and we need to get it over the top and we don't have power, we have the diesel motor that Transmission has a so look at the uh, you can see the difference in, uh, in the little wheels, they're a little bit smaller on this one. This coaster doesn't have any inversions, the diver has four inversions. And that's why you have a lap bar here and a over-the-shoulder harness on the diver because of the inversion. I'm going to go for a swim. Just be careful here. we got a maintenance truck coming by. 12-inch horizontal wheels. And they speed the train onto the chain. 11, call 41. Yukon Striker. It fell and matched the speed of the train. Here it rolls and the kicker wheels speed the train to match the train. So similar, but not exactly the same. Same concept in the lift hill uh, chain. Pulls the train to the top. There is a diesel motor for maintenance and for evacuation, whatever the problem is. A lot longer track because there's no inversions. To the side, the truck used to go like the Just gonna look in the main truck. Yeah, let's let's go inside. That may be interesting. We're having a well, we won't go inside. No, that's from that local area. Oh, it is. Then we can get the footings and then let the water go back. See, I've always wondered about that. When they have these footings in the water, do they do they get scuba divers down there, or they they drain it and build it onto hard ground? In our case, because it's shallow and, and, and local, we drain the. It's different if it's a bridge or something. The water is gone. Oh, you drain all of that in the winter? Yeah. Oh wow. We can. Yeah. Makes sense. Why let that freeze up and damage? Well, we don't. No, we don't drain it on a regular basis. But to do a footing set of footings, we have the capability. Yeah. So what would happen if a ride valleyed there? Is there an evacuation process involving the water and removing it? Uh, well, we'd have to figure out a way to go out and get them, which is a man lift, uh -huh. horizontal. Um, we would evacuate, uh, slow process. Mm -hmm. But once the guests are off, and it, it happens, trains do valley. Yeah. Um, 
we would then have to tow the train back to the tow truck a bit heavy tow truck. In some cases, you have to take the trains apart and lift them off. But wow. in this case, we use uh, long cables and a snatch block system to pull it. Wow. The device just in front of the feeder motors that you can see, that's a squeeze brake, friction brake, and that's what squeezes the train to stop and hold it. People held in the seat. Who knows? The restraint. Sorry? Okay, I, I understand it's the restraint. Gravity. But, but like scientific. No, it's not yeah, gravity. Let's, let's say, how does the restraint work? Um, pistons. Hydraulic like something. Locks? Magnetic. Magnetic. Hydraulic pistons. Okay, all good answers. It's locks, mechanical locks on Behemoth and Leviathan. You know that anti-rollback device? It, has, it looks like teeth. On Leviathan and Behemoth, they have eight little round racks and teeth that lock into the, to the restraint. So it can close against you and then it can't open. On Yukon Striker, it's hydraulic pistons, and they can they can retract and close, but the valving system doesn't allow them to open until uh, the control system in the station allows them. So they are gears, locks, and hydraulic pistons. And that's it's pretty interesting. It comes and it locks. You never yeah. think about how they What's do that. Up with that? Is that What's like up part with of the it? opening procedures? Yeah, they're just doing Where they their. Do it up slowly? Yeah, you, you've got to uh, um, charge the system, so they always do a maintenance lift up and down. It checks, it checks the, uh, the parameters of its uh, encoders and things, make sure the pressure is there. It's a huge hydraulic system. So it usually goes up a lot faster, right? Yeah. Who would do that? On auto cycle, it would start rotating. 